friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today is Friday, so we're gonna talk about my week, my weigh-in and the WW workshop topic. So if you're excited, give this video a big huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on. I do a weigh-in every Friday and I do upload five videos per week. Spoiler alert, I have a video all about protein coming out on Sunday. So again, make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. This is how I've lost almost 140 pounds and lost 90 pounds in 2022. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for accountability or if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and of course my Facebook group. Come on over, join us there. We would love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's talk about my week, my weigh-in, and the WW workshop topic. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an absolutely amazing week. I had quite the week. If you saw Wednesday's What I Eat in a Day, and if you didn't, I'll link it down below for you. I shared a little bit of an update with you that my lovely husband spent almost a week in the hospital. He actually had, his elbow was very swollen, inflamed, very painful, sore to the touch, red and hot. We ended up taking him to urgent care last Wednesday and he was immediately sent to the ER and admitted into the hospital for a septic joint. He underwent surgery to have the fluid and the pus buildup drained out of his elbow, and he came home on Monday. He was in the hospital almost an entire week. He's actually doing really well. He still has some pain and soreness in his elbow, which is to be expected because he underwent surgery. He's taking a lot of antibiotics. He has some pain medication and he's doing a lot of resting and hanging out with Palmer and Lola, which has been really, really great. Like I said, he was in the hospital almost a week. So it was pretty stressful to be honest with you, just worrying about him in general and then maintaining the house on my own, trying to get all my work in. And I'm literally less than a week away from from heading out for plastic surgery. In fact, I leave on Tuesday. So in just a few days, I am heading on a plane to have my long awaited plastic surgery. Surgery day is actually on Wednesday. So it's been a whirlwind of a week, a little bit of a stressful week. And I wanna talk about stress and stressful weeks and light when life happens and eating and diet and all of that a little bit more before I jump into my weigh-in for the week and the workshop topic. It's been a rough couple months for us. First, my dog Lola was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer, has been undergoing chemo now for almost 12 weeks. She is in full remission. Thank goodness she is doing amazingly well. She is literally a little rock star. And she she's very loved by everybody in her oncologist office. So she was diagnosed with lymphoma. Then we lost my lab, Diesel, my baby, who's here on my necklace, a little over a month ago, kind of unexpectedly and kind of quickly, which was absolutely devastating, especially after the diagnosis of cancer with Lola. And then my husband ends up in the hospital. So the last few months have been very, very stressful for me. And I have to say that I am very proud of myself that not only have I been able to maintain my weight, lose a little bit of weight, travel on vacation, and manage my stress to the point where I've still been able to be successful and reach my goals. One of the things that I really decided when all of this turmoil and stress started to happen is that I wasn't going to let it negatively affect me. I wasn't going to let it ruin my progress derail my journey because I had goals in place that were more important to me than stress eating or letting stress get to me. I found different outlets to alleviate stress. Working out's been great. I've been taking a lot of walks. In fact, I've been walking on Sunday for about 45 minutes to an hour and just listening to the birds, enjoying the sunshine, really just embracing nature and just de-stressing as I'm moving my body. I've been watching some of my favorite shows in the evening. I've been reading some books. I've really been trying to de-stress without food. And that's one big thing that I wanted to share with you because you don't have to reach for food when you're stressed out or when life happens. You can find different 
outlets that not only benefit your weight loss journey, but also keep you from gaining weight during stressful situations. Listen, my life has been a hot, stressful mess and I've been able to do it. And just, I am just like you. If I can do it, you can do it. So I wanted to share that with you because that was a little bit of an eye-opening, kind of epiphany that I had that I've actually stayed on course even through the last very, very stressful few months. Before I jump into my weigh-in though, let's talk about this week's topic because it's really, really good. And it's actually something new and exciting to Weight Watchers. We know that they recycle a lot of their topics. This one is much more new and exciting. And this is how to bridge the gap between I want to and I will do. We all struggle with this. We have all these things we want to do. We want to lose weight. We want to exercise. We want to track our food. We want to drink our water but do we actually do those things? And this week's topic is going to help you bridge that gap. I know what to do, I just don't do it. Same. If you have ever said this to yourself, you are not alone. We know what we need to do to lose weight, we just don't do it. And why is that? Why is it that we have all these wants over here, but we don't have the willpower and the will do to get those wants done? Ask yourself some questions, really tune into what is not bridging the gap between want to and will do. Try this, how many steps will it take to achieve your goal? Maybe it's one step, maybe it's two, or maybe it's three or more. If you think about this and you figure out that for you it's one to two steps, consider the circumstances you'll be in at go time. How will you feel? If for example, you need more than three steps, if you need three or more steps to reach your goals, break it down into smaller goals and focus on one step at a time. Once you consider the circumstances, you'll be in at go time and then how will you feel? Maybe you'll feel calm, rested, ready and excited. Maybe you'll feel tired, stressed and distracted or meh. If you find that you feel a little bit meh, try modifying your goal to one that you realistically, realistically want and can do. Then picture any barriers that might get in your way. How will you overcome them? Maybe it's time, food, activity, or your schedule. Based on your answers, how confident are you in accomplishing your goal? Maybe you're like, I got this. Or to be honest, it's a toss up or um, not very. If you find that you feel like you got this, you can do it, now go get that goal. If you're in the middle where you're like, eh, it's kind of a toss up, tweak your goal to help boost your confidence in achieving that. And if you're in that third category where you're like, mm, not really, adjust your goal, think small and simple. I always say that small goals and small baby steps lead to big goals and big results. This is the same when it comes to setting these goals. Really navigate these different tools and try these techniques to see if the goal that you set for yourself is realistic so that you can bridge that gap from I want to achieve this goal to I will or I have achieved this goal. Easy to feel excited, optimistic, inspired to reach your weight loss goals. And in fact, you can be head first into reaching those goals and then bam, life happens. And those goals take a back burner or sometimes get forgotten about entirely. Did you know that there's actually a scientific term for when this happens? And that is called intention action gap. The disconnect between what we want to do, our intentions, and what we actually do our actions. You can bridge this gap though through following these steps. Considering the how, the who, plus the what else is happening and how will I feel and deal, you're able to make your path to these goals extra doable and maybe even life proof. You'll be celebrating your success in no time. And remember, small goals lead to big results. Let's talk about three fast facts from Weight Watchers. Number one, the intention gap is when you know what you want to do, but you struggle to make it happen. Everybody experiences this. Number two, breaking your intentions into smaller, truly doable goals can help you bridge the intention action gap. And number three, setting these goals based on what your future self might be thinking, feeling, and doing can help you reach them. We're all going to encounter roadblocks. We all have things we want to do and we all have things that we actually will do. And bridging that gap is what's going to lead to ultimate success. Like I said, I really like this topic. I feel like it's different for Weight Watchers. I feel like they're really helping us navigate life and when life happens. And I'm the epitome of this the last few months. And I've been able to bridge that gap between what I want 
and what I will do. So I really hope that these tips and tricks help you do the same. So now let's jump into my weigh-in. Like I mentioned in last week's weigh-in, that I have really been focusing more on a whole food diet, really trying to alleviate any inflammation or bloating before I go into plastic surgery. So instead of my usual 80-20, 80% whole food, 20% processed foods or foods that I love, I've really been leaning more on 90% whole real foods and then 10% those processed foods or maybe less healthy foods that I love. And that really benefited me this week with all the extra stress that I had is having that little goal in place. And again, bridging the gap between I want to be less inflamed and bloated for plastic surgery and what am I willing to do to get there. And because I bridged that gap this week, I actually lost point. Four. I'm thrilled with that. You guys know that I am trying to really maintain my weight before I have plastic surgery, recover from that plastic surgery, and really know where my body's going to land weight-wise. And I am thrilled with a loss of 0.4. I'm thrilled with a maintenance, and I'm extra thrilled with any type of loss, even 0.4. Four. So I will go ahead and put up here on the screen how much weight I have lost total, what my current weight is a few days out from plastic surgery. Let me know down in the comments, how was your week? Did you gain, did you lose? And do you feel like you bridge that gap between want and will? Or do you feel like today's topic is really going to help you do just that and reach your goals? And of course, fill me in on how your week was down in the comments as well. I love hearing from you guys. And if you enjoyed another way in video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on. Don't forget I am vlogging my entire plastic surgery experience in Mexico along with my friend Amy's plastic surgery experience. So you're going to get a whole vlog on plastic surgery, having it in Mexico, and what that looks like. If you're considering that for yourself after your weight loss journey or something that interests you, that blog will be out, so make sure you're subscribed and again, your bell's on. Check out that description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and come join my Facebook group. You can keep up with me a little bit more day-to-day -day there, and of course, throughout my plastic surgery journey as well. Happy Friday, friends. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.